I'm gonna use just three paints to finish entire miniature from beginning to the end. I have picked the best paints that are suited for limited palette and I will use only these plus black and white. No magical null oil, no washes and definitely no metallic paints. So why am I doing this? Well, in my last video I told you guys that I own so many expensive paints that I am not even able to use all of them. And I actually wanted to know if I can save me some money by buying cheap alternatives. Now what if you could use high quality paints but only a very limited amount? Amount. How about three? And why exactly three? Well, to answer that question, we have to go back to school and learn about color theory. Okay, who the hell did this? When you were in primary school, you were probably taught that there are these colors called primary colors. And you were told that these are red, blue and yellow. When you combine blue and yellow, you get green. Blue and red gives you purple and yellow and red gives you orange. So theoretically, if we were to use these primary colors, we could get pretty much any color that we desire, right? No. Because of some boring science stuff, I can assure you that combining these three colors will not give you any color on the color wheel. When you combine pigments, you always get more dark resulting color, because this is subtractive color mixing. On the other hand, there is additive color mixing. So when you combine lower value colors like red with green, you get yellow. But this applies to light not pigments. Why am I saying this? Just to tell you that what you are told in first grade is wrong. Screw you, education system! Okay, but this doesn't really solve anything, right? We still need to combine pigments. So how do we make sure that when we combine them, it won't look like someone took a huge shit all over our palette? The solution is very simple. Instead of using red, blue and yellow, we will use cyan, magenta and yellow. Cyan is basically a higher value version of blue and magenta is higher value version of red. And this allows us to get a wider range of colors. Yellow stays the same because it's perfect the way it is. With all this knowledge, we can finally pick the paints for this experiment. Sure, you could use something like magenta from Vallejo, Lothurn Blue from Citadel and some yellow, but the problem is that the pigment in these hobby paints is not pure, since there is usually some white or any other pigment added. Going through the stuff I have, there are basically two options. I can either use Chimera colors, which are specifically made for our miniature painting needs, but are also designed to be used as a whole set of 13 paints. Or I can reach for golden paints. These are heavy body artists colors, not necessarily for us hobbyists, and they do have a glossy finish, which is a problem. The reason why I'm considering golden paints is because the resulting green is way nicer than the one I get from Chimera. But this is kinda obvious, since Chimera has a dedicated green paint. I am especially worried about green because I'm gonna be painting this, Mortimizer. This miniature is from today's sponsor, Happy Owl Games. Happy Owl Games produces high quality resin miniatures for painters and gamers. Their current Kickstarter campaign is called Mortimizer's Magnificent Monsters of the Multiverse. But I like to call it... Mm. These miniatures offer very unique designs that you will have a hard time finding anywhere else. Adding them to your D&D 5th edition games is definitely an option, because there is content for that. Out of these, I like this one the most. I mean, Jesus Christ, it's shooting horns, lasers and shit. By the way, Seraphon Army, anyone? If you're interested in awesome monsters and you wanna support this channel, definitely check out their Kickstarter. Thank you Happy Owl Games for sponsoring this video. Anyway, I either go for brighter colors with glossy finish, or I go for colors that are ultra mad but don't have the brightest tones possible. In the end, I have chosen to go with Chimera colors because I wasn't confident enough that I could erase all of the glossiness. So finally, we got our three colors and we will add black and white to that. And now you might say, Simon, you said three colors. What the f Okay, hold on. Show me. Where is black and white? Black and white are not used. And with that out of the way, the paints are set. Miniature primed and my focus is laser sharp. The stage is ready and the theater can begin. Okay, let's do this. And so I started. The first color that I need is brown, and that is actually a combination of all of these colors in various ratios. In this case, it was quite obvious that I added too much magenta, so I went back and added blue as well. You can notice that I'm using blue instead of cyan, but for some reason I still find that this blue allows me to get white range of colors. Right now you can see that I am base coating the base here, which is actually a mistake since it will get stained by other paints. But whatever, since I had brown ready, I used it for his leather boots as well, 
but made it a bit different by adding more colors. Now it's probably a good time to talk about the strategy here. Basically, I'm gonna start really dark and go lighter and lighter without the need to shade the miniature going further. And so far, this approach works just fine. But as I paint more, there will be two main problems with the limited palette that I'm using. The first one is that I will need to mix my own skin tone. Similarly to getting brown, I will need to use all three colors, but getting the ratios exactly right might be a challenge. The other problem is that I don't have metallic paint. That means that I will have to paint these parts as non-metallic metal, but we will address this issue later. It is at this very moment that I have to tell you guys that you should definitely hit that subscribe button because that way you will see more awesome videos from me. And how much does it cost? Oh, that's right, it's absolutely free! So smash that subscribe button and back to the video. So anyway, you could also see me use a wash here and this is not Agrax Earthshade, it's simply brown mix that has a lot of water. Remember that I can use only these three colors and no mediums or washes, so creating my own wash like this works just fine. And I do it actually all the time with other non-wash paints. After painting some other minor details, I decided to paint some volume on leather boots and his cloak. You can either add white or yellow, but since yellow would turn the cloak into green, I used just white. For the leather, however, I used combination of both yellow and white. Obviously, it took me a lot of time to finish the cloak, but with enough patience, I ended up with quite a smooth result. At this point, my palette started to look like a real mess, so I had to change the hydration sheet. When you are mixing your paints a lot, it's a matter of time when you start running out of space, and this was even more apparent for this challenge. Since most details have now been already painted and the blue looks quite good, it's finally time to tackle the skin tone. The truth is that any skin tone, be it Caucasian, dark, Hispanic or Asian, is essentially orange to some degree, so I started with that. Adding a tiny bit of blue to make it darker is also necessary, but since I added too much, I had to add more magenta as well. Going back and forth between the colors, I think that I got something that could be used as a base coat. When I had a proper look at the face, it needed more depth so I don't have to further shade it. I added more magenta and after some more layers, voila, this actually works. As I progress, I add more yellow and white to my base coat layer and start covering exposed parts of the face. Now, if you're interested in painting faces, I made a whole video where I paint three different faces step by step so you can check it out if you wanna. I painted the hair as well, which honestly wasn't difficult at all. And finally, it's time to paint the eyes. The easy way to do this is to simply apply black paint over the entire eye socket first, then add a small white dot and finally, add even smaller black dot to the inner corner of the eye socket. That way it will look like he is gazing forward. If we place the iris to the center of the eye socket, it could look like he is crazy or scared. There might be some minor adjustments further down the line, but at this point we can move on. The other challenge are the metallic parts. I usually like to use deep sea blue, which is kinda dark, bluish green color, so I use combo of blue, black and a bit of yellow. Starting with the darkest layer and making it lighter and lighter is the easiest way to go. So I just add more and more white. By the way, I have a video for non-metallic metal as well, but right now the only thing to keep in mind here is to know where to place your reflections. As you can see, I built some nice contrast between the dark parts and the reflections, and I think that this looks quite metallic. However, there are still parts that are gonna be golden, and I think that this is even more difficult than just iron or silver, because you have to use brown, yellow and white. Base coating these parts with greenish brown works quite nicely, and moving forward we will just add more yellow to this base coat. Once again, the placement of the reflections and the contrast will either make or break this effect, so I am not trying to be extra smooth, instead I concentrate on contrast. Adding even more yellow to the reflections and finishing them with almost white will be optimal. At this point I would probably use something like Vallejo Ice Yellow, but unfortunately I can use just the three mentioned colors. Remember that edge highlighting the metallic parts with very light colors also helps selling the shiny look. After painting some other minor details and some further adjustments, we finally got it. Mixing just the three paints to get various colors actually works very nicely. And I really think that if you don't wanna spend too much money on paints, painting miniatures with a limited palette works. It's definitely possible with the three mentioned colors, but if you can add to that some skin tones and secondary colors, I think you are golden. Okay guys, so if you like what I'm doing here and you appreciate the effort, definitely subscribe to my channel and see you in the next one. Bye.